Hi, my name's Keith Cooper at North Light Images and uh, this is one of my short videos about the business side of photography. And in this particular one, I'm going to look at specialisms. Not what to do, but what not to do, which uh, certainly when I became a photographer uh, was a decision to make and it's a decision that you revisit over time. I certainly have over the last 15 years as I've changed what I've done, partly to meet changes in the market, which is something you do have to do. Uh, you can't just set your business up and think that's it, it's done, I'm going to stick doing this. Um, I remember a lot of uh, photographers, professional photographers who'd been photographers for years who came a real cropper when uh, digital came in. Um, they didn't think it was anything more than uh, a bit of a passing phase. Uh, they're not doing work anymore, or most of them aren't. Uh, those that are, are very specialised. Um, and that's you know, a choice of theirs which fits their business, hopefully. There, when I was looking at uh, things, what not to do, it also covered things I did want to do. So I came up with four sort of real ways of looking at it. First of all, is there any money in it? Remember, I'm talking about setting up a photography business. Uh, not a hobby. For a hobby, you can do anything you like, anything you can afford, doesn't really matter. Um, this, for me, was uh, landscape photography. Um, I'd love to sort of travel around taking pictures of landscape. Um, I don't have the strong interest to go and spend months hiking across the middle of nowhere uh, to see things. I, I, I prefer comforts too much. I'm not someone who walks fast distances if I can avoid it. Um, all these things would tend to mitigate against being a successful landscape photographer, certainly from a point of view of actually enjoying it and making some money. Um, and somebody said to me, I, I asked another professional photographer at the time, and we're talking now uh, nearly 20 years ago um, about landscape. Uh, they said, well, just make sure you've got other stuff to do that will pay the bills. Uh, the other thing is, I live in the centre of the UK, there's some nice countryside around here, but local sales. Um, I've done some other videos about selling prints and various things like that, but uh, essentially the takeaway from a lot of this is local sales. And there is not enough of a local market or local subject matter that people would buy to justify doing that. If I lived on the coast, well, maybe I'd have a gallery, maybe not. Who knows? That's, a, that's another matter altogether. Second aspect of specialism is the skills. Have I the skills to do this? Well, I'm going to say yes, because if I don't have the skills, I can learn them. Um, now, how you learn various skills is another matter. Uh, personally, well, I've never been one for workshops and courses. Um, I'm happy to teach workshops and courses. Uh, so if anyone's interested, do let me know. Um, I'm happy to teach, but I really don't learn well that way. It's also why I resisted making videos for years, because I don't like learning from videos. Great for fixing some part of my car, learning how to dismantle something, but photography, nope, they just don't do it for me. Um, fortunately, someone at Canon last year convinced me that uh, other people didn't share this view and that they might find some of my things interesting, particularly on the printers and other stuff like that. But anyway, skills, you can always learn them by whatever way you want. Uh, needn't cost you anything. Um, thirdly, in this, um, equipment. Have I got the equipment to do this job? Well, that's very reasonable. Uh, if I'm talking about portrait photography, I'm wondering if I got the lighting for it, have I got backgrounds, what do I actually need? The one thing to be careful with uh, if you're looking at this sort of equipment angle is have you really not got the equipment to do the job or is it just an excuse to buy some new kit? Uh, nothing wrong with buying new kit, but uh, for myself, it needs to have a business reason. That's why I still shoot with a Canon 5DS, 50 megapixel, for my architectural photography, and why I haven't got a Canon R5. Great camera as it is, it doesn't give enough of a benefit in that particular area to make a difference to my business. Now, that could change later this year. 
It might not. Depends on work and what Canon brings out in the way of new cameras. Um, but that's another matter. Fourth thing to look at is have I got an interest in this subject? Now, I, I've said before that you know, professional photography is being able to produce great results when you're not really interested in the subject. To me, that means being able to produce great results when I'm asked to produce pictures of six different bits of machinery in a factory. The first two bits of machinery, I've got some great photos, but the time it's later in the day and I've got my sixth piece of machinery, I'm thinking this looks very similar to the others, um, but no, I'm looking to make as good photos of that last bit as I did the first bit of machinery. Now the interest comes in actually for myself, being interested in engineering, manufacturing, and things like that, building, construction, design. Those areas are what interest me. Creating photos that help get people's messages across in those areas I find interesting. Now, I really don't find weddings interesting. I don't find taking photographs of kids remotely interesting. Um, I have zero interest in these sort of subjects. Now, that doesn't mean I couldn't take photos. I just have no enthusiasm for it. And if you've got no enthusiasm, it's quickly going to show in your work because you do need some enthusiasm to be able to carry you through the sort of moments when you think, why am I doing this? Why am I bothering? It's the enthusiasm that helps get you through it. Uh, so, and if I'm at a wedding or something like that, um, no, uh, really doesn't interest me. Now, I actually, when I started Northlight, I did um, a bit of editorial photography, uh, photography at meetings and things like this, and events and uh, bits and pieces. I still do very occasionally, but usually only for clients that I know and that know me. And I'm almost doing it for them as a favor but I'm charging them for it. Uh, they just happen to know they're, they're happy with me doing a particular bit of work for them. Um, I've almost dropped that from our range of services. Um, problem is, there's an awful lot of competent photographers out there who can photograph groups of people. And also, when it came down to it, there's only a limited number of times I can get much interest in handing over, taking photographs of people handing over giant checks. Um, it is a real skill, um, I have managed it on occasions, to be able to get a great looking photograph of two people shaking hands that doesn't look completely fake. Um, now, if that doesn't bother you and you've got the skill to do it, then go ahead and do it. But editorial photography and that sort of stuff is a very crowded field because a lot of people think, oh, I could do that. and. There are a lot of people these days in businesses um, and they look at the results they get on their phones and they think, well, I could do that. Now, many times they actually could because it's not their job. They've not got to do it every time. They're not going to do it every day. They're not going to be able to produce consistent results. And they get, as, as somebody working for the company, you get a bit more latitude in the results. Now, my reaction to that was, Great, I'll help you take your photos. So product photography, I've moved into specialized product photography, specialized macro photography, so really tiny things, and also specialized industrial photography where I photograph huge great bits of machinery. Uh, we can get inside them and get photographs and so on. So that's my specialism. The more general sort of product photography for businesses, particularly small businesses, I'm actually happy to help people do it themselves. Um, I love doing this. A um, year or two ago, I went and helped a company that sells model railways. They do model trains. These are O-gauge model trains, and they are serious models. We're talking about locomotive, about so big, um, so O-gauge, and they may be a couple of thousand pounds. These are, these are not your put, set them up on the floor and um, have your kids play with them type trains. These are serious trains. Now they wanted to do their own photography. I really enjoyed that. Spent a couple of days there teaching them everything I could about focus stacking, all kinds of stuff like that. 
Um, that's great. They would never, they're quite some distance from here, they'd never have got me in to do the work. They weren't that interested in getting a professional photographer in because professional photographers were unlikely to know much about model railways. Um, and it really helped if you knew something about model railways in taking these photos. So that's a specialism of ours. I'm now happy to teach people, or at least will be once uh, COVID stuff goes away, hopefully. Um, I'm happy to teach people to do this. Now, the nice thing is when they need specialist photography, who do they ask? So I've moved from general product photography into quite specialized. Now you might look at um, specialized studio product photography, but bear in mind that product photography is all about workflow. It's all about efficiency. It's all about consistent results and volume. Um, product photography, I enjoy doing occasionally. If I had to do it every single day, I'm sure my attitude would not be that different to my attitude towards wedding photography. The interest would go in it. So make sure you've got that interest to keep your specialisms. The specialisms also help um, in that you can charge more, makes your business more profitable. Um, I've also moved into more technical aspects of photography because when it comes down to it, I'm sorry, fellow professional photographers, an awful lot of you are absolutely useless when it comes to understanding the technical side of photography. Now, if I can make benefit from that that benefits my business from a profit point of view, then I will do it. Um, and just one other thing about your specialism, be confident, because if you don't believe that you're actually good at doing whatever it is you do, then how else do you convince other people? No, I'm a damn good photographer, um, and I'm happy to say that. Sure, I still have those doubts, but you know we don't put that into the marketing materials. Anyway, I hope these little videos are of use. Uh, please do feel free to ask questions. Please do subscribe to the channel uh, if you're interested, uh, and give me some feedback as to what sorts of things you like, because, um, I'm happy doing them, so uh, thank you very much.